Okay, so here we are again. This is Alkesh. You saw this particle system already for the rain particles that are bouncing off of the aircraft as the aircraft is cutting through the rain. Um, the other particles are, this actually is the fire, and the fire is exactly where the engine is. Uh, so let's just look at the particles and how uh, we actually manipulated particles using fast noise. Um, what I wanted this to look like is uh, flames um, as you would see them uh, when there is high wind. Now in high wind you would have the, the flames actually cutting off in the middle and then you know disappearing and I for that I used fast noise system and in this fast noise system you see that this animation here which will obscure some parts of this um, particles in the in the final render stage so these are 3d but when it becomes 2d render it would look like this but um, that's not what I'm going for so I use this fast noise to uh, create a uh, an effect mask and because of that what you see here is that you know the uh, the particles are cutting off randomly as this fast noise is blocking them um, then I use the blur um, and then a little bit of glow there you go so you see this glow and the particles and so that's all the fire right and then the similar for smoke here you have uh, the turbulence that is uh, playing a part in creating you can't see properly because of the uh, the dark uh, background here uh, let me see if I can quickly move closer to these particles here yeah so you see here are the particles um, coming towards the camera now um, and again they are moving um, with the same system as, as the other two particles so you, you wouldn't be able to see them here because we are in the local space and here is the rendering part of it um, here would be the aircraft and the particles and then again blurring of that to make it more smoke like and then they are merging with fire particles and both of them are merging with the uh, rain particle uh, and those particles then merge into the scene so we'll take a look at that later but let's um, look at texturing first um, because uh, th there are some important things that I want to highlight here's the aircraft and if I take out the texture file here what you have is the bump map only right so here's the aircraft here are the bump map so you can see uh, where the door is and the windows and all that now the bump map is created using this file this is the bump map file it's just a uh, an image now what I have done here is um, created a merge of this file that we just saw plus the UE setup that you saw inside of Maya just to show you how these windows are actually created and placed in the right place right so you see that and you see this indentation here um, it's right here so I had said in my earlier video that I would like to um, have some uh, flaps here right so let me just get rid of this uh, grid lines that, that's getting in the way so what we are going to do is use this bump map system to create the flaps alright so let's uh, set that up and for that what we need is this paint node this is the paint node that is going to um, manage all the strokes that we are going to um, do on this wing now let me just set this up I'll use the polyline uh, I actually don't need to see the title and the icons so I'll just say icons only so I'll go into polylines and I want straight lines All right. and this paint node I'll bring it up here well actually they're both going into the merge so let's just look at merge so that way you know exactly where you are putting this um, the flap now this is probably too thick so let me reduce the size of the line uh, to something like this and I'm going to create my first flap here so put a point here point here uh, maybe not that big 
on here, on here, and then close it. So you see the flap is created here, right? So, so that's one, and then you can do one more. Uh, let's go to polyline, straight, and reduce the size. I'm just randomly doing this uh, just to uh, get the point across, but hope you uh, get some value out of this. Uh, here's the second one, and you can see as I'm creating, you can see it's happening right here, you know. So you have another one here, um, and maybe one more. So polyline, straight. One, two, and then this one slightly bigger, and close it. All right, so you got three flaps here. Um, now you can keep doing other panel work on the wing, you know, if you want to. But the idea is to show you how bump map can be used at fusion level, meaning at composition level. This is not model work that you're doing in Maya. You know, this is. Uh, way after that and you're just finishing this shot in um, at the compositing stage and you still have ability to do some of the model work that uh, was left out right and that was the whole idea of showing that that you can create these things now the same thing applies with the texture and what I have done is created another merge file here um, which is just the colors that are used for the aircraft. Now you see that uh, in the original texture file I had US Airways here which I wanted to not use um, and just have a generic model of plane so then I used the paint node to uh, clone that out and you see that it's gone now um, and also I think the, the back flap the sign here was also different and I uh, painted some part of that out just to uh, have three lines here. Right, so that's that on uh, some quick model work. Um, let me just put this file back onto the material. And then I have a specular map coming here um, from the cloudy sky, which is this right here, after the color correction. So this is a color corrected file and that file is used to um, to show um, the blend node with uh, this is without it as you can see because it's a cloudy sky so you wouldn't have highlights like the one that you see here um, it would be more up oh, sorry that wasn't the right one here this one so it would be more flat you know it uh, you wouldn't have very specular uh, highlights and, and in here you see that it's showing the reflection of the uh, of the clouds and, and that's exactly what I was going for all right so that's that that completed the model work here now the lights which are important part of uh, of the aircraft and what I did is I created these lights that you saw which was fine um, you you know you saw the lights and in, in the previous video um, but what was important is that I make some animation of lights flashing so for that I went into the um, animation curve and I only created if you look at the uh, not the hot spot that's the next one that we'll look at but if you look at the intensity of the point light the light that you see here this I created at the start of the animation so you have um, you have point light quite dim and then it goes up stays up for a while and then it comes down and then flat again and then I used fusions um, I, I forgot the name of this button here I, I'm not able to see it right now but when you when you hide when you select all these points and then click this button here it would actually create the animation um, for the rest of the timeline and I, I've used this many times in Maya, but uh, this was the first time that I was actually attempting to use in, uh, in Fusion, and it worked out quite well. Uh, it was giving me exactly what I was going for. 
Now, it's not only the the light um, that it that is reflected onto the body that is important. You actually have to see the light itself, and unfortunately, in fusion right now, you cannot render the light itself. You see the light effect basically, but the hot spot of the light you don't see. So what I did is after the um, um, uh, after this uh, this uh, scene file, which was you know the, the plane that is uh, animated. Uh, or the uh, local space that is animated, I should say, and that is merging into the the merge node where I have film camera also coming in because I wanted to use the film camera to show how the 3D locator would look in 2D environment, right? So let me illustrate that by looking at this render node, which shows you the aircraft through that film camera or let me better display this in uh, in the 3d environment itself so here you have the aircraft uh, and the light um, now what you have here this locator 3d is right here I have made it renderable so you can see it <coughs> and as the animation goes through you can see that it's going with the aircraft now because I needed the path uh, what I did is I used expression here. So X position, Y and, and Z position, they are all calculated using the expression which looks up to the animation of this node here that we just went through. Now if I do that then it would end up inside the aircraft because that's where the origin of the space is, right, this space. But I needed it offset a little bit on the uh, uh, on the top so it would stick out here because I'm going to use this point to create the hotspot and for that I had to just add some values uh, and take out some values in the X and all that just to um, you know make it exactly where you know it would be actually I don't need minus X I don't know why it would have done that we delete that so it's in the center um, or maybe a little bit minus point zero zero one. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. Maybe the aircraft uh, is offset. I don't know what's going on, but anyway. So this looks like it's in the middle. So now it will stick to the aircraft wherever the aircraft goes. The locator will go. It creates a path basically, and that's the path that I'm going to use in this hotspot. And this hotspot now will follow exactly you know where it is okay so now I know why I actually did the uh, offset because this hotspot is up in the air I want it more closer to the body so I may have done some tweaks there no problem so let's just uh, do control Z a few times and there it is so now it appears you know where it is so now hotspot again if you go and look at it's right here and hotspot is let's see find a bright spot where you can actually see you can't see because you are not viewing it but here it is so here is the hotspot uh, that shows you where the light would be if there was a light and that and combination of the light itself would give you the illusion that this light is actually affecting this geometry but they are both separate things now you can actually use the light itself to um, position the locator but remember light is not moving light is right here you know and this light is in the local space so I needed something that would move and that's the reason why I had used locator um, connected to the aircraft alright now again um, animation was the same way um, I created uh, this hotspot primary strength up and down and flat and then you know just took this and applied to the rest of the timeline all right so I'm out of time here so I'll stop and then we'll pick it up again thanks a lot